This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We're now sitting in the plaid, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Circle K and PA. Um, when I was in Thailand, PA contacted me and they wanted to consult me about uh, charging station for future planning, you know, uh, layout and tips and tricks. And uh, because they realized that uh, I'm one of the super users out there and they just want to get some input on how they might uh, want to design future charging station. And then, as a coincidence, Soko K also contacted me recently. And yesterday, I was at a meeting with Soko K, and they asked the same things about charging stations. Uh, you know, what is good, what is bad, what is your experience, and then how should they design future charging stations? You know, so I think it's actually great that Soko K and PA came to me and ask me because sometimes when I go to some charging stations or when I use some charging stations, I wonder if those people have ever used. EVs before. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, and also I remember we can talk about the Circle K one. Uh, I guess PA is not too interesting for you guys. PA is the uh, Provincial Electricity Authority in uh, Thailand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, what you guys know is the Circle K. So I remember they opened up uh, this page here, just a Google, quick Google, and they started looking at some chargers and um, uh, like uh, charging layout, for example, was one of the topic. Okay, by the way, uh, maybe I, I can't talk about everything. Uh, some stuff is secret, especially the, the future one, but in ge on general basis, I can talk about, yeah, we talk about charging layout at least, so that's not secret. Like I said, yeah, you know, these kind of layout, this is bomber by the way uh, this is good it takes up more space of course it needs more space but it's better for uh, many different EVs because you see here some some cars they have the charge port on the right side with the wrong side should have been left side with the right side and then when many cars charge like here you know this I wonder if this is uh, um, uh, Öken in Oslo then it could be troublesome when we have uh, cars with different charge port locations parking side by side. Yeah, this is current contact. They are kind of like a partner with uh, K. Hmm. This is all number. Oh, this is the old one. Yeah. Okay. That's. I think that's why it's so okay. Yeah. But you see, for example, this layout here, yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's, I understand it's for us like a, a cost perspective. It's easy to set them up side by side, but uh, maybe we should have a little bit more space in between them at least. So at least the case told that um, regular parking spots, they are 2.5 meters wide, whereas they try to make them 2.75 meters wide. And I actually recommend three meters wide. So, um, uh, so you get more space because of uh, different charge point placements. So we talk about that one. We also talk about cable length. You see here, we have the tritium chargers. There's actually a, an, an what is it called? NEC 400, I think it was called. Like, like, a, like some kind of rule, some kind of standard that was applied in Norway a uh, long time ago, where the cable should not uh, be long enough to hit the ground. So that's why some chargers, like the tritium charger, they have ridiculously short cables. And that actually becomes a problem when you have fat e-tron with a charge port in a clumsy location. Uh, in my opinion, the charge port shouldn't be towards the, one of the corners of the car. Uh, and not, okay, that's not the story. I mean, uh, not, in my opinion, it should not be in the front because we have something called Salzschmutzfest in Norway. Yeah, but okay. Uh, anyway, so yeah, we we talk about um, a cable length, by the way, I should explain to you guys. So this video is more like an educational video and I also, also touch into what we talk about with Soko K and PA. But when it comes to cable length, I also gave uh, both PA and Soko K some input that, yeah, um, I mean, why, 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 uh, by the way, why shouldn't it uh, touch the ground in the first place? Well, well, I can tell you that uh, there was one, uh, actually one case where I realized that that is bad. I've seen charge plug fall to the ground. No problem, right? Uh, but over time, it becomes a problem because um, uh, it was one time I met a guy with a ZS EV at uh, Ionti Dal, but he was not at the Ionti charger. He was at the Circle K charger and he struggled to make it work with charging. Uh, basically, handshake fail and then I found out that the plug uh, the could not go fully he could not fully insert the plug and when I look at the charge plug I saw that it was quite damaged the CCS plug it has fallen to the ground so many times that P 
pieces of the, the the plastic pieces of the plug has fallen off and then got stuck in between the car's port and the plug so i had to find some kind of stick and then poke it out and then i managed to plug it in and then he i think he started charging but you see that's the problem because um Pl uh, charge plugs they should not hit the ground over time they will damage and then also the problem with tritium charges is that there is a silly design it's kind of hard to show you here but when you kind of see it you see it's like a little uh, pocket where you can put the plug in there and that that um, the problem is that there is a, a little rubber seal around there that over time gets worn out and then eventually it falls out and then suddenly you have no rubber seal holding uh, the plug into that tiny pocket and then it drops on the ground a tesla also by the way tesla supercharger has a different uh, different um, uh, holder that was also troublesome and they also tend to fell on the ground um, or fall on the ground rather um, but yeah so that led into problems that they, they kept falling but then of course these cables they are kind of short but they still kept dropping on the ground uh, but when it comes to cable length, by the way, back to that topic, yeah, uh, eventually they kind of remove that requirement so that cables can be longer. So you will see that, for example, typically here, this is an ABB charger. Then the cable is long enough so you can kind of fit it in cars with different charge point locations. So I also turned into that one, yes. And then we also talk about, by the way, some, some chargers, like more modern chargers, like this is a new tritium charger. It has a little like a dispenser on top there and that becomes better. Also here we have the hypercharger. Uh, this is the old version. Well, actually, there's another variant with a hypercharger, which also has this kind of uh, cable holder. Uh, yeah, the Ionity chargers, by the way, they are called, um, what was it again? Uh, IDT, no, I don't remember. There was a three letter acronym. But these chargers are tritium chargers, but they are Ionity only design. So you will only find these kind of nice and fancy tall ones for Ionity. Uh, and again, they also have this spring, or no, it's, it's like a, not a spring load, it's um, the spring loaded one is for chem power, but this is like a wire thing there that uh, helps you extend the cable and then it also prevents it from uh, dropping the ground and my impression is that yes the ionity cables they they rarely drop to the ground uh, if at all really and uh, i can show you uh yeah here we have more of these uh, hyperchargers but uh yeah this one also without uh, the cable hole so in general yeah i i said yeah what is this uh Oh, the new new variant of AB. Yeah, but you see, in general, these designs here, they are actually nice. And I remember, I remember when I went to Korea, that was many, many years ago, when, when uh, Kia e-Niro came out. The Koreans, they already had this kind of cable holder thing. It was a Korean charging station, uh, Korean made in Korea. Uh, and I start, and I now realize that it's actually very nice that it doesn't drop to the ground because uh, eventually it will cause problems and also it will add extra cost. So we touched into that one uh, and also when it comes to cables by the way um, uh, let me see if I have a good one. Yeah for example this one here you know these cables here they are not water cool and same here they are not water cool we just call it passively cool they are just thick enough to be able to sustain an amount of uh, amps and then it depends which station is but in general they they are rated for 375 or 400 amp continuous load but then eventually in the case where it gets too hot then it, it might throttle but at least in general uh, it, especially in Norway Europe it doesn't get that hot maybe in Thailand it becomes a problem but um, uh, and also uh, chem power I talked to chem power about cables uh, they have um, the, the 300 amp or 375 amp uh, passive you know passive cables uh, but they can actually kind of overcharge them they can um, uh, they, they, many sites allows 500 amp, uh, but not continuous, but it's good enough. So um, I, when I was at Kempower uh, factory, we looked into charge. I know Kempower, they have really kick-ass software. They log everything. So I said, okay, can you guys look up on uh, an EQC? No, no, EQ, EQS, because EQS is 400 volt base and it can charge quite fast. Uh, for example, this one here, the, the fat e-tron can only uh, sustain around 370 amps. So it's not too interesting or it doesn't hit the limit, but at least EQS, we found an EQS and in charge, 
AI software at the chem power, they could see that they, they could see uh, voltage in the battery, you know, that it was an EQS, the location. They could also see the temperature in the cable. And uh, the, the car was in fact uh, taking 500 amp in the beginning, but then for not too long, I think it was just five minutes, maybe not even five minutes. And then the car started throttling. So, and then the, te the temperature on the cable dropped. So you see, um, passively cool cables, especially in, in Europe and Norway, uh, they, it, it's good enough for today's cars. Like, um, you, and then you think, well, what about the uh, Taycan or, you know, Equan GT, they can take 250 kilowatt. Yes, but that's 800 volts. So yes, uh, it, is, it is actually an advantage for 800 volt architecture because the voltage uh, on those cars are typically 750 to 800 volt. So when they take 250 kilowatt, the, it's only uh, 375 amp. So yeah, it is an advantage, of course. But as we saw in the case of the EQS, uh, the EQS didn't even hit the limit and the cable could deliver the power just fine. In Thailand, that might be a different story because I measure it. I remember it was a, it was a Tesla, it's parked in the sun and I, I measure on the black parts. Or I think there was a chrome delete part or something. Um, it was 70 degrees Celsius because it's strong as the sun is quite strong over there. And I can imagine that the cable, if it's just exposed to the sun in Thailand, it could probably be 70 degrees Celsius and then you plug in and then it increases and I think around I think I heard from Kempower that uh, once the cable uh, and the sensor hits 85 degrees Celsius it then needs to throttle so I also talked to um, PA about uh, roof by the way that in Thailand you see here uh, there's no roof there, right? There's a roof over the chargers here, but that's more to protect the chargers. But I mean, they are, they can still just be exposed to the elements like this just fine. They are designed for, I don't know, what kind of IP rating, IP 70 or 67 or something. Um, but um, uh, we also, I also talked to Ionity about this uh, also, like, I mean, should they have a roof? Uh, they asked me and I said, well, roof is nice. Like if you live in Bergen, you know, <laughs> uh, but the problem with in, in the Western world is that uh, um, cost is, I mean, uh, labor is high and material cost is generally also higher. So if you want to build a nice roof like you have on the gas pump, I mean, the gas pump is different in a way because over there it's required to have some kind of safety in case of, huh, it's kind of funny, right? In case of uh, fire, huh, because the, the, the fire hazard is higher at gas pumps than at uh, charging stations, yeah. Believe it or not, even though the media tries to make it look like uh, EVs are, are, are more dangerous or for fire, right? But it isn't really so. But yeah, so gas pumps, they need to have this, I think it's, I don't know, required by law, some safety stuff that in case one of these uh, uh, fossil cars catches fire, then uh, there must be a self-distinguisher uh, system. That's why you have the nice fancy roof, but it costs, but that's just the name of the game. Whereas EVs, it's not really required uh, to have it. And at least when I talk to Ionity about this, uh, they say that, okay, they can build a roof, but who's gonna pay for it? Well. The users, of course, they are taking the bill. So I said, eh, I think it's not needed in Europe. In Thailand, on the other hand, Thailand is a different story because the sun is so strong over there. And then uh, if you can get at least the cable on the roof and I guess maybe the whole charger on the roof, uh, it will stay cooler and then maybe have higher efficiency. And then labor cost in Thailand and material cost is way lower. So actually for PA, I recommend them then to go for a roof. But in Europe, I said, uh, it's not needed. As long as you can make the, the user experience uh, better and you don't have to dick around uh, too long before you can start charging with, you know, with apps and stuff right like, then a roof is not really that needed. And normally when I charge at Ionity uh, or, or some of the other chargers, you know, I just beep, RFID, done. And then I go into the gas station, yeah. Um, and also we touch into other problems. Let's say this one is a prime example, by the way. There, there are lots of nice pictures I can illustrate things here. Um, you see that uh, we have uh, 50 kilowatt chargers here and 150 kilowatt over there. 
and the, 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 this is like the traditional design that you have all the components and everything, power units, everything uh, in this unit and in this unit. And uh, you guys have experienced it before, right? You come here with a fat e-tron and you want to use the high power chargers. What do you find there? A freaking e-golf and an i3 charging on the high power chargers and then the 50 kilowatt chargers are available <laughs> yeah uh, so actually a more modern design is like a power sharing uh, this one is way better the alpitronic hyperchargers because usually you can have yeah, this is the fat version it comes with in different uh, width and then this one is the fat one that has four power units by the way so then you can share power uh, the small disadvantage with the alpitronic is that one power unit is whooping 75 kilowatt so if you have a 300 kilowatt uh, one, or let's say if you have the smaller one with it the, the 150 kilowatt that is shared and um, uh, one like it depends but uh, one fat e-tron might take up two power units and then the other cars they, they yeah it's like what you want is fine grain uh, distribution of power uh, you don't have it there uh, when it comes to yeah this since this is okay um so okay they don't use delta chargers but um I heard that Delta chargers, they have roughly 20, no, I think it was 20 or 25 kilowatt power units. Uh, and then, oh, this is, seems to be Denmark or Sweden. Uh, so, yeah. And I should also, by the way, mention that, um, well, actually, I have so many topics here. But, um, yeah, we, we can also mention this, that, you know, these ABB chargers, by the way, uh, they, uh, they have less, uh, smaller power units. This is 50 kilowatt. It's old school. Uh, but um, uh, the problem with ABB chargers, um, okay, let me see, should I go into this topic now? Um, yeah, okay, let's go into this topic. We also talk about reliability. And uh, here again, prime example, these tritium chargers, they are so unreliable. I'm not just saying this because oh, I, I'm a Kempower is my sponsor. You know? I'm saying this based on my own experience that uh, I have ex I have been all over the place, uh, all over Europe also, but um, a, a lot around Norway and, and Sweden. And in general, I've seen that the tritium chargers, not only these ones, but also the tritium chargers that the Ionity uses, the one that is like, more modern, right? Like, you guys know Helsing Boyle, right? They are so unreliable. They are broken all the time. But not only tritium. We have also, let me see if I can find a picture of the ABB. Um, um, a Circle K, they also use uh, one type of ABB, the, the 175 or 150 kilowatt chargers. And uh, let me see, there's like a nice tower. Uh, do we have? Yeah, there, there, there. This one here. Yeah, this one. This one, I don't know what's up with it, but uh, th there's a cooling unit here uh, for, uh, let me see, the, the, p the cable is still passively cool, but the cooling unit in the charger tends to break. And you know, I, I jokingly say ABB always be broken, but there's like a little bit of truth in it because the, um, the yellow chargers was like this, was some, there was even some orange juice leaking out in the snow there. And then once the cooling unit is kaput, then uh, the car, I mean, then the charger does not deliver uh, 175 or 150 kilowatt anymore. It delivers 37 kilowatt. And also, and I also experienced this as at Hobby. Same problem there. I was receiving only 37 kilowatt. So it's, um, yeah, it's um, not good uh, that we have chargers that are unreliable. And then based on my experience, many, many years of experience, uh, I, I said to uh, Circle K that, um, you know, my uh, impression or my claim is that, I'm going to show you a nice picture, okay, is that tritium is the most unreliable ones that you guys use, and then ABB are the second unreliable ones, and then the hypercharger has way better reliability. And then I'm not sure what else they use, and Delta also, but they don't use Delta. And Circle K said, you are absolutely right i was like okay so it, that was my claim and they have statistics on this and yeah they, they know uh, you know um and i also asked them uh, about okay so w if a tritium charger or an abb charger is kaput down you guys don't make money on it and I said yeah of course we don't and then i said do you guys get any compensation from tritium or abb when they are down no they don't and you guys have seen it sometimes the chargers could be down for a week 
or maybe months and then you don't make money on it. I mean, if you have a data server that is down, you have some warranty and the data server, you know, they're supposed to have 99.999% uptime because one, if the data server is not up, you're not making money on it. But then if a charger is down, Circuit K is not making money on it, but the, the hardware manufacturers, they don't give any compensation to Circle K. <laughs> so it's like uh, messed up stuff, right? Um, well, okay, by the way, I, I should also mention, by the way, we, when we talk about uh, cables, we jump a little bit back and forth there, but I made a list of topics. I uh, hope it won't be too long, but uh, there, there's also, of course, um, Ionity. They use 500 amp uh, water-cooled cables. We also talk about this with uh, with PA because, yeah, uh, especially in PA, in Thailand, they also they're also interested in high-power chargers there. So I said, yes, uh, water-cooled cables are, are better in a way because then you can have 500 amp continuous load, especially in hot countries like Thailand. Uh, but also uh, the problem nowadays is that cars, uh, EVs, they are like this kind of, well, okay, do we have, yeah, this one, even, even an, um, an Ionic 5 uh, cannot take 230 something kilowatt for too long anyway. And well, I think this one is 800 volt based system, but the, I think there is an, uh, the Tesla, yeah. But uh, uh, cars, today they just simply don't have uh, the battery tech to take eight, uh, 500 amp continuously anyway so in a way um, uh, I said that you know Ionity okay they they have the whole idea that they want to make it uh, kind of you know fast and yeah the, the, I understand it but in a way they also kind of uh, it's a little bit overkill compared to today's uh, cars, but uh, it's good also that they already scale up the, the charging network for the future, so it's ready, because it's, it has to be, you know, the chicken or the egg. So at least I only think they are ready, but then other car charge point operators, they might not need to have that kind of awesome speed. They can go for something like this with some power sharing, but yeah, uh, for, for, uh, f like uh, 800 volt and uh, water cool cable, uh, like Ionti goes for, they are the best, of course, but they're also the most expensive one and it requires more maintenance and more stuff can break versus just a passive cable that these ones use. Um, and okay, um, I, we also touch into another topic, by the way, which is uh, card payment. So uh, card payment, that's also an interesting uh, topic. They said, yes, uh, in Norway, actually, we might get a law that enforces charge point operators to um, implement card payment on all chargers but in in the beginning they will only apply to new type of charger or the new chargers they install because when I talked to Soko K they said that yes the old chargers here they are a little bit troublesome because they haven't really been designed from the beginning to to be card payment uh, possibility or something like that right? and uh, the retrofitting might be somewhat expensive for them so the, the, they um, um, yeah, uh, I understand it. Uh, that's the thing. Okay, sometimes as a consumer, I might be a little bit annoyed. But uh, from cost perspective, uh, these chargers they also cost some money to install, and uh, suddenly you need to replace them. Like there, there are some locations, like in no man's land. I, I don't know if Circle K has any good pictures here. Like this one uh, could almost seem like it. Right? Okay, uh -huh. this is. Um, um, uh, Fauske. But yeah, this is a prime example. Like, okay, this is it's not really no man's land, but it's kind of far, uh, far out there. Like this. <laughs> but what the heck is oh, this one? I wonder if this is Hökos yeah, outside the Bergen. But yeah, so wow, this is really shitty ones, by the way. I wonder if this is Sis Control. This is the, 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 the dark side, the dark story, the dark ages of Circle K when they had some shitty chargers. Uh, really unreliable ones <laughs> but yeah so the problem uh, with these kind of locations is that they might not be that much visited i wonder if this is uh no okay i'm not sure where it is but and then um if th suddenly they are required to upgrade them with card payment it's going to be expensive for circle k or during contact or i mean mail or uh, you know, recharge and then the problem is that not many people visit them on these locations. So you have to invest lots of money, but then uh, you might not get the return on investment on those locations for a long time. So in my opinion, I also told them that um, uh, if Norway wants to have card payment, which is better for the consumer, Innova needs to step in or something. You know, we have a big money bag in uh, this. Okay. We have a big money bag, uh, the oil fund. 
uh, we should just just go for it and improve the charging network for the whole country. But uh, the charge point operators need a little bit of help because they're going to lose money. And then, yeah, if they are enforced to do that. So we turned into that. And also another thing, by the way, this is a very nice picture, by the way. I also told Circle K, you know, Circle K, they are in a really awesome position because they own the gas station, but they also own the charging network. Unlike Tesla or Ionity or other charging networks, they, they, they just have the charging network, but they don't, they don't own the gas stations they are uh, located at, right? Uh, Shell or whatever. So I, I recommend them that we want to have the same amenities that the, at the chargers, like Casper pumps have so which means that you know trash bin yes put up trash bin this is very nice put up a thing where you can clean the windscreen because when you are charging you want to spend the time doing something useful and then you can clean the windscreen and get rid of some trash or something right so yeah they, they there was even a picture i saw uh, somewhere here i'm not sure if i can find it anymore um uh, yeah this one this one i don't know if you see it there there is also so okay they have a trash bin variant with uh, a, a tissue dispenser i mean who knows what you want to use tissue for but um these kind of amenities you have them at gas pumps and i in my opinion you should have the same user experience at the uh, the, the electricity pump as the gas pump if you know what i mean um also, uh, we also talk about also pricing and yeah, uh, <laughs> this one is a nice location, by the way, fancy location that um, uh, I'm a little bit frustrated sometimes that uh, consumers, they just don't understand. They think that charge point operators are greedy bastards because you look at the pricing, especially nowadays when the electricity price is high, that, you know, this is uh, why, why is the electricity here so expensive? Because the electricity at home is way cheaper. Well, okay, this one might be a kind of a bad example because it's uh, kind of in a very fancy location but just look here for example this is prime example with tesla you see in order to install a, a, a high power charger or something you need to have a concrete foundation and you need to dig some some cables on the ground and then uh, i'm not sure you don't see it here but usually there'll be a, a some kind of transformer station nearby so you have to have some massive power and then also you have to pay for the peak power and, and installation everything and also these chargers they uh, they have a 4g uh, connectivity or maybe i don't know 2g 3g something but they have a sim card in there and normally especially at least for for the abb chargers or these ones here um this one here i was told that there is one sim card in each charger they don't go in some kind of common bus and something like that uh, so they have to pay for the communication and for the installation for the for you see the poles here everything here costs money when they want to install some chargers here you see here and also there might be a, a 24 7 hotline you can call and also eventually some of the cables might fall on the ground and break and there's some kind of maintenance cost involved so that's why you don't have high power charger or even 50 kilowatt charger at home because it's it's very expensive to have them there and that's why these chargers they are expensive you you have to pay a high kilowatt hour price but okay some car manufacturers especially tesla they have vertical integration they can do some smart shit and they can actually offer electricity cheaper than some other ones so and then we also touch into chem power by the way uh, because when we start talking about charging like power sharing because tesla they have power sharing unlike these ones they are kind of static and clumsy and then if you know like i mentioned the e-golf charges at the high power charger and then the fat e-tron needs to go on the 50 kilowatts but in tesla especially v3 you have smarter power sharing in these one you also have smarter power sharing uh, and then we touch into well wait a minute what about chem power because chem power ticks the right boxes they have some smart cable management they have power sharing really smart power sharing they have outstanding software like class leading industry leading software these chargers here they are kind of dumb they don't they can't do much um they they have what was it again yeah look, look, and also the reliability on chem power is just outstanding really uh so they said yeah okay they don't use chem power today but i mentioned that uh, have you noticed that uh more more charge point operators in norway like uh, recharge and mere they start using chem power they said yes they actually know they they chem power is more and more common
But okay, anyway, uh, it was a very long speech. I mean, I could talk for another half an hour, no problem, about chargers and everything. Uh, I find it very interesting. And uh, also, this is one important aspect of uh, user experience with an EV. So uh, I also prepared some stuff here. So, so I want to ask you guys, um, which kind of chargers do you like the most and why? Uh, I just want to have some feedback that uh, we can, you know, you know the, the charge point operators, Ionity, Circle K, Recharge, Mer, Evini, they're going to watch this video, you know that? And they will listen to you guys' feedback. So which chargers do you like? Do you like the ABB charger? Do you like the Tritip charger? Do you like the Ionity chargers? Uh, what about Chem Power? I'm trying to be as neutral as possible, even though Chem Power is my sponsor, but I chose them for a good reason because my claim is that they are the best. But that's my claim, all right? You guys don't have to listen to me. And then also, uh, which amenities do you want at the charging stations? Like uh, trash bin, is that important? Do you want toilet, 24-7 toilet? Do you want food, a vending machine if it's closed? Uh, that's usually a problem in Norway at least. And uh, what about vacuum cleaner? You know, I had like a brilliant day. Okay, the vacuum cleaner, they are kind of static. But what if there's some kind of battery driven vacuum cleaner? We have Dyson vacuum cleaner, it's freaking brilliant. But then the problem then if you have a, a, a battery driven one, you kind of need to have some kind of safety. Otherwise, some people might run away with it, right? So, uh, but yeah, sometimes, you know, usually, I mean, the whole idea for me is that charging might take some time but you can always you spend the time doing something useful while the car is charging like eat go to the restroom or maybe clean the car or something you know clean the windscreen you know use do do something useful while you are um, charging and I, I should also mention by the way we also touched into that when i talked to circle k it's very insightful to talk to circle k because they know some stuff about gas station and they could tell me that yeah, the whole, uh, you know, the, the nozzle for filling dinosaur juice, they have disabled the, the feature where you can lock it and, and fill it automatically because of safety. And they told me that, uh, the, yeah, in the old days they used to have it, but the problem is that people forgot that they were filling gas. And then they went into the gas station and d d did some stuff, right? And then they came back and they drove off with the pump still pumping in uh, dinosaur juice. I was like, Wait a minute, I mean, why, modern fossil cars nowadays, why don't they have a mechanism where they detect that if the lid is open, then just refuse to drive? Uh, I'm not sure if you can even detect that it's, refu it's receiving fuel, the fuel levels are rising. You know, there's a state where you don't want to drive, but apparently, even with modern fossil cars, you can drive off while you're, f yeah, whatever. So, because EVs, by the way, if you are plugged in, the car refuses to drive, which is a very good safety feature. But okay, anyway, um, and then, okay, the last question I have for you guys is, what is the ideal charging site design layout? I mean, should we have the backup stall? Should we have the drive-through stall? Do you guys want to have a roof around it? Do you, what kind of layout is the best for you or where, where you don't have to stay too close to others and you know they want to ding your door when they open it or something like that? Which one is the best? Yeah, I'm going to ask you guys some of this and then hopefully we get some uh, healthy discussion going and then the charge point operator might listen to you guys and they might actually apply some changes based on it so anyway um, what else should I say about when I talk to Circle K and PA uh, well okay um, I was actually quite happy that they came to me and asked me uh, and also yeah uh, used me uh, consulted me because I think I can be like a spokesperson for this but I also want feedback from you guys but I'm really happy that Circle K came to me and also PA came to me and asked me because I have some strong opinions about things. I have some experience with this and I think it's good that they listen to me uh, as a power user, but also maybe try to get more input from other users before they design the stations because I feel like some charging stations today, they are kind of clumsy made. So maybe also I can like a last question, which charging sites or locations or designs do you guys dislike the most and why is it like that okay anyway i think that's going to be it for now i hope you guys enjoy this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later